The state of the Soviet Union and its society could be described very simply with a phrase used by people across the country. We can't go on living like this any longer. That applied to everything. The economy was stagnating, there were shortages, and the quality of goods was very poor. Gorbachev took over a superpower sick with social breakdown, corruption in the Communist Party, and alcoholism. To tackle these ills and to revive a decrepit economy, Gorbachev called for reconstruction, or perestroika, and a new spirit of honesty, glasnost. I remember very clearly what Gorbachev said at that time. He said, there are two roads we can take. We can either tighten our belts very, very tightly and reduce consumption, which the people will no longer tolerate. Or we can try to diffuse international tension and overcome the disagreement between East and West and so free up the gigantic sums that are spent on armaments in the Soviet Union. Reykjavik, Iceland, the second Reagan-Gorbachev summit. Gorbachev now decided to re-examine Reagan's first ever arms control proposal, known as the Zero Option. Reagan had offered not to deploy cruise and Pershing missiles in Europe if the Soviets withdrew their SS-20 rockets. Brezhnev had turned Reagan down flat. Now Gorbachev wanted to cut a deal. He understood that perestroika and the internal changes were starting to slow down, that he had little time on his hands. He had to decide. Either he could free up resources from the arms race, or he'd be forced to look for them elsewhere. I was with him when he decided to confront Reagan with the question, did he or didn't he want an agreement? Did he or didn't he want disarmament? Ronald Reagan did want disarmament, but would he give up his strategic defense initiative, SDI? I said, OK, let's not even leave a hundred missiles. Let's abolish them completely and go for the zero option. This came as a shock. Everyone was surprised. Reagan hit the table and said, well, why didn't you say so in the first place? That's exactly what I want to do. And if you want to do away with all weapons, I'll agree to do away with all weapons. All weapons, of course, we'll do away with all weapons. Good. That's great. Now, now we have an agreement. Yes. But you must confine SDI to the laboratory. No, I won't, said Reagan. No way. SDI continues. I told you that. I am never going to give up SDI. I think that my principal position was and remains the same. The nuclear arms race should never be taken into space. It was difficult enough to limit the nuclear arms race on Earth. Gorbachev pressed and pressed, and at one moment, uh, President Reagan, who was very clear in his mind about this, wrote a little note and pushed it over at me. It said, George, am I right? I read this note. I said, absolutely, and passed it back. The chance to make the most momentous agreement since the Cold War began, the elimination by the United States and the Soviet Union of all but 100 nuclear weapons each, was lost. Media, the fax machine, the computer, were opening up the USSR. Gorbachev and the Politburo watched satellite TV in their offices. After Olympic boycotts, the 1986 Goodwill Games were seen live both sides of the Iron Curtain.
Gorbachev's policy of glasnost brought pop culture out into the open. A new breed of young people was created by our intellectuals, a breed that rejected all our Soviet past. This was moral degradation. Our youth was being turned into human robots. The Soviet people were being plunged into wrenching change. We became particularly worried by the end of 1987. We saw that the country was not going in the direction it should. The situation of the people was getting worse and worse. The situation of the armed forces was no better. Gorbachev reacted to growing opposition by pressing ahead with plans to reform the Communist Party. The main achievement of Gorbachev's policies was that in the space of a year or two, he made the fear disappear, as if by magic. People had lost their fear of speaking and acting freely. If I hadn't promoted the reforms, if I hadn't tried to let the people breathe freely, if I hadn't tried to open the door to glasnost and democracy, to stir the society, to get it thinking and acting, I would probably still be in my Secretary General's armchair today. I could have stayed there a lot longer, since I'm still quite young. Washington, D.C. Ronald Reagan still pursued his Star Wars vision. The Kremlin now believed that it would never happen, and therefore should not delay agreement on arms reduction. Gorbachev, in the United States for the first time, had come to sign an historic treaty. His visit, seen live on Soviet TV, enhanced his standing at home and abroad. Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev signed a far-reaching agreement. For the first time, an entire category of nuclear weapons was to be abolished. <laughs> 